Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. This is a Flymo GCL 75 from the late 1980s and it's probably the biggest hover mower you've ever seen. Uh, yeah, definitely the commercial end of the scale. So it doesn't work. Uh, the previous owner said that they put some petrol in and yeah, they couldn't get it to fire. I think it was running though when they first got it, possibly. So it probably isn't anything too serious, probably just an issue with the carburetor. It's probably gummed up. Uh, from sitting or maybe it's got water in it or maybe it's just dirty. So we're going to have a look into this today and we're going to hopefully mow some grass later on although it is uh, of course still the winter time but yeah still fun nonetheless. So uh, I have no idea what we have to discover underneath the cutting deck or underneath that cover where the belt is. Hopefully it's all good um, but we'll have to of course discover that. Yeah the deck has got a little bit of damage Nothing too serious. Right, I think I'm gonna remove this cover. Obviously, we wanna be focusing on the engine mostly at this stage, because that is something which I know does not work, but it would still be good just to get an idea of what the rest of the machine is like. So we will just have a look in here. Um, I don't think this guard is cracked or anything. It's very scratched, but it doesn't really matter. There is a hole there. Okay, let's have a look under here. So the first impression is actually pretty good. We actually have a belt. Like sometimes you take the cover off, you get a massive mouse nest, and then underneath all that, there is a shredded belt. Um, but no, that looks all right. I'll have a closer look though. This is the belt tensioner. So that has disengaged the deck. That engages it. Um, yeah, that's... That's looking all right. Obviously we need to discover what the bearings are like. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a big impeller fan under here. And yeah, it looks complete. Here's something you don't see enough of anymore. Made in England. On the aluminium pulley. Very nice. So, uh, of course, the, the engine is uh, Briggs & Stratton, so that's actually made in the USA. But uh, yeah, it, it's all a nice combination. Uh, I think this would actually be a really reliable machine because they have really good engines and well I can't see this being too difficult to maintain if you're using it commercially. It's pretty simple. Just have a look underneath. It's not great, not terrible. A lot of rope wrapped around this one. Uh, the blades have had quite a bit of use. They're quite thin uh, but there is still life in them. Yeah, it looks like the impeller is mostly good. There's a few fins, I don't know how we can see. A few fins have got a little bit of a, a chunk taken out of them. But yeah, that's not too bad. So really, they just need a bit of a service, I would say. Um, I don't even know if you can still get blades for this. I, I can check, I will check, um, but we'll have to see about that. I'll, otherwise I'll just sharpen these. Um, but yeah, the next thing to do is to really get the engine running. This deck actually does just remove as well. You can slide it off but I don't know if we need to do that. Just a bit further back in there, you can see we've got the gearbox. It's basically a uh, to come to the peerless gearbox, which is the same as the Westwoods, the ride-on mowers. So it is like a pedestrian ride-on mower, if you know what I mean. It's got the same gearbox and actually the same engine as well. Right, so first things first, let's just have another quick look in there. Yeah, it's about a quarter full of fresh petrol. Now that I've taken the photo, you can see <laughs> that we do have some, uh, well, grass by the look of it. Maybe a bit of uh, flaky old fuel. Unless that's paint. But yeah, you do get the, uh, the dried up fuel turning into like a flaky material. And yeah, it looks like there's a bit of water in the uh, far right corner as well. So the fuel tank will likely have to be cleaned out. Not a major problem. So yeah, let's have a look under the air filter cover and we will see exactly what lurks beneath. Usually there is a really old air filter which is deteriorating. Here we go, let's have a look. And of course I will check the oil as well, but that's not really a priority as I'm not trying to start it at this stage. But I am quite hopeful that I am going to get this running because I think it was supposed to be running uh, before it was parked up for 
a couple of years. Okay. So, yeah, we've got an air filter. That's good. Um, it looks like it is pretty normal. Uh, it's probably going to disintegrate when I touch it, is it? Uh, it's sort of heading in that direction. <laughs> it's not terrible. Yeah, a few more years, and that would have probably disintegrated when I picked it up. Um, but we can see in the intake there, and that looks quite clean. Um, but, yeah, otherwise, that, that is not too much of an issue at all. We'll just take it off, um, and we'll just have a... A quick look in the bowl as well. The reason why I'm just going straight in with taking the bowl off is because the person I got this from actually knows his stuff. I think he just didn't have time for it. And yeah, he's already he's already tried to get it running. So well, when I say he tried to get it running, he put fuel in and he basically determined that it needed to have some carburetor work. Okay, this nut seems to be a bit snarled as they sometimes are. There may well be water in here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that pretty much tells us why it's not working. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a rock pool in there, in, in the bowl, which should be perfectly clean. Uh, it looks like that is rust, which has come from the, well, the bowl itself, most likely. It's most likely been sat with water in the bowl, and it has corroded. So yeah, we'll, we'll give this carburetor a full clean. Uh, there's absolutely no point in trying to get this running without doing any work to the carburetor. So let's get that removed. I will check the oil, like I said. Um, but that is a pretty good indication as to what is wrong. Yeah, it's looking pretty crusty. It's gonna need a fairly good clean. What I'll do is I'll dismantle it and I'll put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. And the bowl has now dried up and you can really see what's in there. It's a bit like a pebbly beach. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just tip that out, we'll have a look. Yeah, it's, it's not really that dirty in there. It can be cleaned quite well. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just sandblast it. And that'd be like new. Um, but yeah, that is what we have produced. It just turns to dust. Uh, yeah, so we'll give it a clean, but let's just dismantle the carburetor first. If I can do, of course, in here, we do have the emulsion tube. And that may well be stuck, which would not be good. So to give myself the best chance possible, I'm going to just start soaking that now with some of this uh, Manol M40 lubricant. We need to remove the float, so we'll just slide the pin out of there. Okay. Yeah, let that soak for a little bit. Then I'll probably put it in the vise so I have maximum leverage with the screwdriver. Yeah, this is not good. Serious concern about stripping it out. Um, right, okay. Try the screwdriver.
Right, it's a fast forward an hour, and we've moved on to another carburetor. The other one had completely had it, it was totally stuck in there, and really there was very little chance of getting it out. It was just too corroded. So I've got this other one, uh, which I just had lying around. As you can see, it's also very, very dirty. So it also needs to have an overhaul and a really good clean. Hopefully this one isn't quite as bad. It actually looks worse externally, but internally, hopefully, it's not as bad. We will soon find out. Yeah, much better, way better. And you can see in there, it's looking very good. So yeah, it actually looks like mostly an external clean that it requires, but we will just clean the whole thing and make it all perfect. Because uh, yeah, why not, might as well. Peace of mind. Well, that's also uh, <laughs> great. That's also quite stuck. Let me just give that a bit of lubrication. Might have to use a bigger screwdriver as well. I've got it. Just put it in the vise quickly and that managed to give me the leverage required. Because I could really push down whilst turning. It has, uh, has chipped it a little bit. But that looks fairly good. It's a little bit dirty. Well, yeah, like I said, we'll just give it a clean. I might replace it. Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks quite good, as I keep saying. So we'll remove this top nozzle. Not with that screwdriver though. It's quite a long one this. It's gonna need a clean. And then we have this screw just here this adjustment screw and that's for the low idle okay so I'm going to stick that into an ultrasonic cleaner get it as clean as possible like I said mostly externally but it just needs a thorough clean and um, yeah we'll see about these I think some of these are probably reusable to be fair, they all are, it's just that one. If anyone wants to remove that again in the future, since it's already been chipped a bit, might be impossible. So I don't know. Uh, I'll see if I've got one, and if I do, I'll put a new one in. But let's just put this into the ultrasonic cleaner, first of all, and just get it all cleaned up. Right, so we've got the ultrasonic cleaner here. It's got some hot water in it. And we've got the carburetor. Uh, I think probably, yeah, it's not gonna fully fit. Um, there we go. Right, yeah, I don't know if the lid's gonna fit. Kind of. So we'll put that on for 20 minutes and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so 20 minutes later we have the main body. It's quite hot. Of course, I did clean this a bit. I gave it a preliminary clean with some carb spray because it was just so greasy. So that can be cleaned thoroughly now. I've put everything in the bowl. Uh, you might argue that should have been done first, but they're really not that bad and I'm going to spray carb cleaner through them anyway, and some compressed air. So yeah, we'll give them 10 minutes, they really don't need it. And there we go. Yeah, I can see quite a bit of dirt, just loose in the bowl. It was worth doing. So that can now be used as a natural weed killer. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's quite a step in the right direction. I just noticed the throttle is stuck on this carburetor. Interestingly, um, just gonna have to free that off. I don't know why? Because the engine this was on ran within the last year. I'm not too sure exactly where it's stuck. There we go. Starting to move. I'll just keep spraying it. And eventually, 
that will work its way in. Just lack of use. Just surprising though. After another five minutes of working that backwards and forwards, it now moves absolutely perfectly. Uh, yeah, that was really stuck. I had to really force it just to get it down to get the screw to touch against the stop there. But that's, that's good. Right, so now it's all covered in oil and stuff. Um, we'll give it a clean. So yeah, just gotta be careful with the seat with this one, because it's got a rubber seat in there. We don't wanna rot it. So actually it doesn't need a, a great deal of carb spray, this main body. We'll just give it a quick cleanse. One and a half turns out for that one. This one we need to screw all the way in. Now I've got a new bowl gasket, so that's going to be fitted in just a second, or I could actually fit it first. That might make it easier. Right, okay. So yeah, I didn't change this uh, a motion tube and jet in the end. Just keep that with the original one because it, it does look good. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck next time somebody or me tries to remove it. Okay. And then we have the floater needle valve. the bowl and then we have the nut but we also have the mixture screw as well and of course there is the little washer which goes under there so I'll just put the nut on first you can actually do it when it's all as one complete thing um, but obviously yeah what you don't want to do is tighten it if this is screwed too far in if you have the wrong mixture, because you could potentially mash up the end of that. So we'll screw that in second, and then it'll be one and a half turns out again. Just going to go finger tight. So half, one turn, one and a half. There we go. And that is the carburetor reassembled. Of course, it doesn't look particularly pretty, but it's not all about looks. So I will refit that to the machine. And obviously the, uh, the fuel tank needs to be cleaned out. So that is the next step. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, quality of fuel we have in here. As I said, I think it is quite new. Yeah, it looks quite clean. There's a few bits in it, but that's probably come off the fuel line. So we'll just clean out the tank. It really isn't that bad. And that fuel line isn't great. Um, I could change it. I probably will change it. I usually do.
so we have got the fuel tank back on it's all cleaned as you can see it's looking a lot better in there and externally the machine is still dirty i will give it a clean at the very end some people say why don't you do it first i just don't like to do it first i like to show off what it's like and yeah you get a much nicer finish if you can then give it a really nice clean and it just looks much more presentable so let's put the carburetor back on we've got the new fuel line and yeah this should hopefully go pretty smoothly there shouldn't be any issues with refitting this Okay, so there we have it. Muffler's back on, carburetor's on, and I think the next thing to do is to check for spark. If we have spark, we'll put fuel in, check the oil, and then we'll give it a go. I'm not gonna put the air filter on just yet. Um, and really, I need to get a new air filter, so yeah, we'll leave that off for the time being. But the throttle seems to work. Um, I might need to just reset the governor, although that looks to be, uh, that looks to be working as expected. But yeah, we can reset the governor if necessary. So we'll fit the spark tester. Make sure we can see it on the camera as well. Well, there is spark. I don't think that's picking up on camera though. Interestingly, maybe it was. I can see it, but yeah, it's hard to actually turn the engine over fast because it's still trying to turn the, the pulleys over on the deck and it's disengaged. So um, yeah, maybe it's just full of dirt. Maybe the belt shrunk, um, but yeah, I'm happy to move on to the next step. At least we have spark. I think actually before we do try and start the engine, it would be a wise idea to remove this panel on the back. Now actually, it's already had two, no, sorry, three screws removed, which have one left, and that might be stripped out. Let's just see. Well, no, we do have some movement. So this should, I believe, reveal the pulleys, the belt, and the gearbox. Yeah. And yeah, it could really do with a clean out. So I'll take it outside and I will just blow all that out with the compressed airline and make it all look nice and clean again. Um, then we can inspect it and make sure it's all good. That's looking so much better and actually it looks pretty good in here. There's the belt. There's a bit of fraying. Um, but yeah, we are looking quite promising, I would say. And that is the same gearbox which is fitted to the Westwoods, the older 1980s Westwoods, like the uh, T1200. So just for the time being, we will put that plate back on again. And eventually I will find some new screws for it but yeah we'll just put the one back in for the test so let's move back onto the engine again and we'll see if we can get it running so the oil is looking low it does have oil in it though which is Good, because it means that if somebody has been running it in the past, yeah, it's not been running completely on empty. But that will just need to be topped up. I think it is best to top it up at this stage, and then we can really circulate that oil and drain it out, and then we can put some fresh in. So I'll just do that first of all, and then we'll put some fuel in the tank, and hopefully we can start it. Will it really be that easy? I do usually have some test oil, just like used but good oil. I'm just going to test them for a second. 
uh, and then they can be drained out. But yeah, sadly, I don't have any. So we're just going to use this cheap oil, which, yeah, I don't actually need much of anyway, so it should be fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's in the safe mark. So it should be good enough just to run it. Put some petrol in the tank just there. So that actually worked really well and I've just removed the uh, guard for the belt and I've removed the belt because obviously it wasn't 100% perfect. It did run and drive and it did mow but there was a lot of noise coming from the deck and I've established that it's this pulley here or this spindle here which needs new bearings and the other side this one isn't too bad but let me just show you this one. That is so rough but this one that's pretty good. So we probably don't need to do the bearings in that side. This one though, yeah, that's just terrible. And obviously when that's running up at high speeds, that is just so loud. So yeah, we'll get this done if I can do. I really hope we can do. Um, looks like there's been a bit of welding done on the bracket before. But yes, otherwise, I think if it wasn't for the noise, it would actually work really well. So of course, I need to also sharpen the blades. So we'll do the blades as well. We'll flip it up in just a second, but let's just remove the pulley. It wasn't even tight. Hopefully this comes off. When these things are stuck, it is a bit of a nightmare. Actually, we do have a grub screw in there. Yeah, usually when you have the, uh, the dome washer with the bolt, you don't have the grub screw as well, but there is a grub screw. So that is good. Let me just take that out and then yeah, we'll uh, we'll soak. We'll keep soaking that because it probably is stuck as well.
clean the threads a bit. Now will this be stuck? Uh, I think what I'll have to do is use one on a uh, ratchet. Hopefully we've got the reach. Yeah, there we go. But quite stubborn. Probably never been removed. And what's this? This is 1988, the engine at least, so it's probably 89. Probably assembled in 89. Should be out enough. Let's see if it slides off now. Nope. Do we have any more grub screws? Nope. Okay. Joy. Right, ideally, I'd want to put a harmonic puller on it, but I don't think we really can. Just squirt some lubricant in where the grub screw was. There. Yeah, so the air hammer did miss slightly. A um, little dent on the side there, but it won't affect the operation. Yeah, made in England, five inch. Nice. And yeah, a little dent on the top as well, but that won't make a difference. So at least that's off. Yeah, so uh, what we need to do really is uh, remove the blade and then we can sort of remove this whole assembly and hopefully press out the spindle and then do the bearings. Got circlips. We've actually got some snap rings for the bearings, so we'll need to remove those. So there is the uh, impeller. It's not too bad. Got a little chunk out there, a few chunks on the fins, but still, yeah, it's perfectly usable. And uh, you probably can't get replacements anyway. So, yeah, that bearing is so bad. Oh, the bearings are so bad. There'll be two. So much twine, garden twine. So yeah, I'll explain why I'm removing this one fully in just a second. Let's lower it back down. So essentially, uh, it's all one unit. It's all one assembly. Like this spindle housing is actually attached to this spindle housing, just to make it nice and easy for us. And not only that, but we do have more extensive cracking than I thought. It's pretty bad actually, it needs to be welded up, but it's not as simple as just welding it up because it's actually bent at the right angle. And if we can remove the whole thing, we can obviously bend it back and then weld it properly. But to remove that one, we have to remove it on this side, which of course means disassembling that. So as always, it's never as easy as it first appears. I've never actually worked on one of these before. Um, but I think it is doable. I'm going to do it, regardless of uh, how difficult it is. <laughs> yeah, so that's the attitude. So let's remove this one and hopefully it's not too stuck. I don't think this one will be as bad, I know. Dangerous thing to say, but... Yeah, it doesn't have the big hole here. So it won't have had all the moisture sort of driving up into it. So we'll see, it's probably even worse.
Of course, we mustn't forget the grub screw. So we'll just spin it around. It already looks a lot cleaner. Maybe I can use this lighter duty one again. Uh, let's just see. Huh, can't even find it. Maybe it doesn't have one. <laughs> what? That's weird. Where's it gone? No, there actually isn't one. There's not a grub screw on that side. Interesting. Okay. Well, in that case. Yeah, fun. Um, well, we'll give it a soak. <coughs> Let's just um, give it as much chance as possible. See if it takes this. No, we're going to have to use the air hammer again. Okay, well, it did work last time. I just need to be a bit more careful with that, I think. Perfect. Much easier. Good. My suspicions were correct. We can remove the whole deck, so we'll do that now. I don't think there's actually anything else holding that on. So if I just lift up the back of the machine, that should move out of the way. Yeah, so I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but this bar here is very bent upwards. And well, somebody's already welded it into that position, which is a bit of a pain. Yeah, that is a bit of a pain. Could cut it, could redo it. Um, we'll have to see, but first things first, let's just remove this assembly from the deck and then we can really see what we're working with. So, four bolts on each side. Looks suspicious, doesn't it? <laughs> but no, it's not what you're thinking. There was a drink incident. There we go. Right, so we can get the big deck out of the way. And we are left with huh, this wobbly contraption. Oh, it's totally cracked. Pretty bad, actually, really bad. Um, yeah, just not really, not really built for commercial use, that. It's just a really, really thin bit of uh, box section. Anyway, we will um, make sure we can get the bearings out first. Oh wow, it's amazing. The side that sounded quiet has actually got a, a bearing in it which is totally obliterated. It's lost so many of the ball bearings. How is that so quiet? So yeah, I had to do this. There was no two ways about it. It needs a full set of bearings. But now you can really see just what's left of this bearing. This was one that sounded good, somehow. I don't know how. Um, but obviously that is stuck on there. We'll press that off as well. Still got the boss on the bottom. So, um, yeah, just need to get it back to the bare spindle. And it was inevitable. Just means we're now stuck with that.
Okay, so we've got the first spindle all done. Obviously it needs a bit of a cleanup, but I've got the inner race off that broke and yeah, the stuck blade boss as well. So now we have the other one to do. So I'll get that done and then we can work on fixing and welding the actual frame which holds the two spindle houses together. I find this to be a good way to do the uh, inner race when it gets stuck because, well, it's basically when you can't access the underside of it because we've got this little ring here. Otherwise you could use a bearing puller. But yeah, when you can't do that, I just weld two nuts on the heat, also assists with the removal, and then you can just press it off and it works pretty well. Okay, so that is the main frame straightened and welded, so all the cracks have been welded, and now I can reassemble it with new bearings. I also just wire wheeled the two shafts, so they should be uh, easy to fit bearings to. Right, so that's one set. Right, there we go. So they're now ready to go back into the spindle hubs. Time for reassembly, and it's of course just really the reverse of the disassembly, so this should, hopefully, fingers crossed, be quite easy.
using some uh, copper grease just to prevent it from seizing in the future. Although sometimes it still does. There's nothing worse than stuck pollies. Well, stuck wheels on a rider mower. If they get stuck on the shaft, that's a nightmare. So you can do things to prevent it. It's quite a snug fit anyway, and that's been clean that shaft. Okay, that's lovely. Nice and quiet. Okay, so these blades are not terrible, not great. I um, I did search for that model number and I couldn't find, I actually did find the parts list, but I, when I searched the, the part number for these, I couldn't find them. But there is a possibility that another Flymo mower has the same blades, just with a different part number. But um, yeah, we're just gonna have to sharpen these for today. And uh, yeah, they'll work, they'll definitely work, but we'll, we'll put a nice sharp edge on them. The reason for cleaning them is so that we get an accurate reading when we do the balancing. Both blades sharpened, both balanced as well. You can see the gap here is the same on both sides. So um, yeah, they're ready to fit. You can see both the edges are equal, same angle. Nice sharp edge. Okay, let's get these fitted. And there we have it. Perfect. Okay, so we can now refit the deck to the machine, but I'm just draining the oil currently. We'll put some new oil in. And, well, it would be good to pressure wash the machine. We will see.
Okay, that seems good. And there we have it. So it's all put back together. I need to put the air filter on. I've got a new air filter for that. Uh, also new oil. So yeah, first things first, there's the air filter. So we'll get that fitted and then fresh oil. And then I think we're gonna be ready for a test. And it's looking a bit cleaner as well. My dirty gloves are making it look messy from the start, that's unfortunate. Okay, so we've got the new air filter in there. Now for the oil. Yes, yeah, so as mentioned, I have already drained the oil. Um, but there will always be some residue, so I don't know exactly how much we need to put in there. So we'll try it at that, just test it. Uh, very close actually, yeah just below maximum. So I'll just give it a little bit more. That should do it. So let's give this thing a test, a proper test. Let's see if the repair work has worked. Hopefully it has, hopefully the new bearings have made a massive difference. It shouldn't be anywhere near as loud. Obviously the engine will still be the same, but there was so much bearing noise. I don't know how well it picked up on camera. It's funny, sometimes it can be super loud in real life and then you barely hear it on camera. But I should think with how loud that was, it would have come through quite nicely. So <laughs> let's go and give it a go. Let's go and hopefully mow some grass, like a larger area, uh, unless it doesn't work. In which case we'll be back in here fixing it again. But otherwise, yeah, that is a good step in the right direction.
Changing the bearings has definitely quietened it down and it does seem to be fully operational. So that is a really good step in the right direction. Also, I think if you were gonna use this on a regular basis, you would wanna be cutting short grass, not long grass, because it does like to create a swath. It creates clumps of grass. Um, so it's definitely like a regular weekly cut mower, that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, yes, I think we're gonna leave it there. On to the next project. Thanks for watching.